currently on um, a continuous glucose monitor sensor trial. So con continuous glucose monitoring, CGM, as opposed to a blood test, which gives you a very up-to-date snapshot of what is going on in your blood. Continuous glucose monitoring is that you have a sensor like this uh, sort of in your body. Well, it's on the outside, but the sensor probes into your body and it's on all the time. And if you have a receiver, and in my case, my pump is my receiver, it sends signals every five minutes. The, the pros is that you constantly have, um, you can look at the screen and it's like, a, it's like a little video, you get a little graph and you can see if it's going up or down. And even better, with something like the pump, it can be programmed so that if your sugar starts to step up, um, it'll actually go loop and tell you it's going up. Likewise, if it's if your sugars are starting to go down quite dr dramatically, then ditto, go loop, loop, loop. Um, it can be a very good thing, particularly to help you minimise bad hypo attacks, because you get this uh, oral warning. The next level, actually, if you don't go and um, acknowledge that you've uh, understood that you're being told that you're g going for a low blood, blood sugar, uh, then it actually gets to the next stage where it vibrates, uh, the pump vibrates, which means that if you are already getting a bit in incapacitated by your hypo, you'll get another sign to tell you that you're having a hypo, and even in the future, I think that it's very shortly, if you don't acknowledge that signal from your pump that you're having a low blood sugar, then it will actually text somebody and let somebody else know that you're having a low sugar. So it's been very, very good for small children um, and maybe people who have very, very few hypo-awareness symptoms. Anyway, so I'm just going to take this one out and put a new one in. Um, now that is the transmitter. It's a bit dirty at the moment, I should clean that up. Um, and that needs to get charged. So that goes into the little charger, it starts bleeping away, and that's marvellous. Now, yeah. that's actually been in for six days, and as you can imagine, they do get a little bit on the itchy side. So that's what goes into, I'll hold it in front of my shirt, so hopefully you can see. That's actually quite soft, it's not, that in itself isn't like very, very nasty, but you certainly don't try and put it in like that. I'll show you the next stage of putting the next one in. But that one's used, it's done its six days of service. So I'll say thank you very much, and put that away in a sharp spin. Um, this is the next one going in. Um, I've, I already opened the packet up. Um, it's meant to have just a little bit of time adjusting to the air. Now, this little product is it's called Zoff, and an adhesive remover wipe. It looks just like the old fashioned swabs you used to have in the old days. But basically, for any item that's a bit covered in the kind of stuff that you, uh, well, plasters basically. And this, it, this actually gets stuff off of your skin as well as off of uh, an item like your charger, like your transmitter here. Um, so if you've got any more so that just cleans you, cleans you up, you can see the dirt on there. Right, now the next stage is I'm going to put the sensor into this thing, bang it into me. Um, it's a good idea to figure out where you're going to put your sensor on. It's got a lot to do with avoiding waistbands for a start, you learn that the hard way. This thing is going to be on for six days, so you do have to be quite careful about where you put it. This is a normal swab, and um, it's good practice to clean the air of your body that you're going to put your sensor into, but it's not necessarily vital. I'm just going to stick with some really obvious right on the front so you can see it. So I'll avoid where I've put another one before, but I'll stick it there. Um, the thing to note, this is the Medtronic um, sensor. Okay, so here's your sensor. There's a, um, a sort of neck here with two black rings on, and then this holdy bit. And there's a a bottom that's only got one hole and a top that's got a hole and a, and a cleft to put those into. Those pop in at a sort of angle, make sure that they're in. Then the whole thing slides back. You might want to be sure at that point to have the lock on. If, if it's um, up and down, it's locked. If it's sideways, sideways, it's not. Um, you're going to want to take off this first bit of 
uh, covering covering the plaster and also the, the long uh, sheath that hides the very nasty looking needle. Um, but that's ready to go. So I'll just check that is ready. Now you, you basically put it flat against your skin. That's, that's meant to be flat against your skin and then up a bit. So when it goes in it's not quite 180 degrees but it's kind of going in like that. So up there. There we go. Take a breath and bang it in. Um, now it comes off of this machine quite easily, but I find pulling the this handle out is a bit problematic sometimes. Oh, there we go, as it comes. It does look kind of terrifying, and that is, I mean, that really is quite a serious bit of kit. But actually it doesn't hurt that much, which is a good thing. Now what you need to do next is pull the tab off the bottom and get the rest of the sticky thing down. You have to leave this for a minute or so, a couple of minutes if you can, uh, to, as they say, get wet. Now, that gives me the chance to explain what it's doing. It is not in your bloodstream. It is not reading your blood glucose level. Now, your blood is up to date. Your wonderful body is busy doing this all the time with upping your insulin, lowering your insulin, upping your glucogen release. Basically, it's doing this all the time to keep you in the band between four and eight. Well, this is what your body would be doing if you weren't diabetic. Um, so your blood is completely up to date at all points in time. What the body tissue, the status of the body tissue is approximately 15 minutes behind your blood sugar level. So if your blood sugar starts to go down, your body tissue is about 15 minutes behind. A way to think about this, or the way I think about it, is I just call it sensor delay time. Whatever your sensor tells you, your blood sugar is 15 minutes ahead, which means it can be going up or it can be going down. If your sensor starts to tell you that your sugar is going down, so let's say your sensor is set to tell you if you go less than 5.5, by the time it tells you you're at 5.5, your blood sugar is 15 minutes ahead, so you could be lower. You could be at 4 or a bit below 4, which means you are hypo. So what you should do is, as you get alerted to a low blood sugar, is do a blood test anyway. I think there's a lot of misunderstanding out there about um, CGM. First is that it's measuring blood, which it's not. It is measuring body tissue, glucose. Not really sugar, glucose. And also, people think that you don't have to blood test anymore. And I think people think that about going on the pump as well. <laughs> and I have to tell you, you are still going to have to blood test. Um, these sensors are very sensitive. Um, they're very sophisticated in their own way, although I really honestly believe that within a very few years they're going to have to improve a lot. Um, they're currently very expensive. They're approximately £10 each, and I believe they are, to a great extent, hand-assembled, which adds to the cost. They aren't easy to use. Um, they they aren't hard to use, but it's, uh, it's another level of commitment in terms of time and in terms of your own understanding of how they work and how they can work for you. And you will end up doing a lot more downloading of data, but it, it's, it's incredibly clever. And um, if you get the chance, I would definitely take it. And I think what might end up happening is people might get the chance to do a three-month trial because it gives you an awful lot of insight as to what your sugars are doing, and it can certainly help you set your basal rates if you're on a pump. Anyway, um, so there, those are the bits involved there. In a minute, when that finishes charging, I'm going to pop it on, cover it up with a little bit of micropore, and call it a good job. This is finished charging, this is the transmitter, so I'm just going to click that on. You should see a little green light. Yep, and then we're done. But I'll just uh, tape it on a little bit of micropore. Um, you can get specialist uh, plasters that are dressings, wound dressings, that are ideal for this as well. But this will do for now because it seems to run out. So the idea is just to stop it snagging on stuff. Um, the next thing you need to do is if you're on a pump, you would go into the pump 
I say sensor, sensor start, new sensor, connect new sensor. What will happen uh, shortly is um, it's going to take two hours for this to be ready. So it's already had a little bit of breathing time when, well breathing time, it breathes when it comes out of the packet and it has to get wet when it first gets into before you hook this all up. And then another two hours before you pop a blood glucose meter in. Uh, so it's, a, it's a, a proper blood test reading. And that calibrates it up and then you're off and running.